so we have another new record at the southern border. Customs and Border Protection reporting more than 2.3 million migrant encounters in the fiscal year 2022, which ended last month. That includes 98 people on the terror watch list. Texas Republican Dan Crenshaw just went to the border to assess the situation first uh, at first hand, and uh, he joins us now. Good morning to you. I, I, I see no end to this. I'm, I've been looking for answers, trying to figure out solutions here, and there's none in sight, is there? No, there won't be an end to it until there's policy change. And the policy changes are pretty simple. You have to disincentivize illegal immigration. Uh, you know, I noticed uh, Biden's press secretary saying yesterday they, that this isn't really their fault, that they, you know, they're, they're dealing with an unprecedented crisis. It's a very different kind of immigration crisis than past administrations have dealt with. That's just not true. It's just not true at all. The, the difference is they incentivize it because they make it very clear to anyone who crosses illegally that they'll be given a bus ticket to anywhere they want in the U.S. They'll be given notices to appear, uh, which don't have a lot of legal teeth. And, and people might appear in court. They might not. And they usually do not. And so obviously there's a huge incentive to get in now while the getting's good. That's, that's, that's the word that has mm -hmm. spread. The cartels help spread that word and they help coach people. They take a, they take a fee um, from anyone who crosses. And so everybody's making money on the southern side of the border, uh, especially the cartels. So this Biden administration is empowering the cartels, which, by the way, are also uh, smuggling fentanyl across our border uh, to the tunes of thousands and thousands of pounds, which is enough lethal doses to kill every American many times over. And we're not talking about this like it's like it's a, it's a violation of our sovereignty or, or our national mm -hmm. security. And this administration has completely failed us. It's almost as if the fentanyl is a weapon of mass destruction. And you fought in the war on terror. And here we have the statistic that 20 uh, terrorists, terrorists on the terror watch list, folks, were found in September of 2020 and then 98 this fiscal year. And 20 alone in September, excuse me. So right. I mean, I'm just thinking about how American taxpayers are willing to pay to be protected from terrorist attacks. And we spend a lot of money on it. We've, tried, we've worked very hard to make sure that we are protected from terrorists. And now you go to the border, and for, from your perspective, you fought in the war on terror. How, how outrageous is it that you have, it's just basically wide open and 98 can, can come across and nobody blinks and the White House doesn't say anything? And those are just the ones that we happen to be tracking and we're able to catch. And so, you know, it, it, it was obvious to a lot of us that before long, the, the word would get out to terrorists around the world that the easiest way to get inside the United States uh, is, is through these border crossings. Remember, those are just the ones we caught. There's plenty of others that are getaways. Uh, border Patrol is constantly tied up with groups of hundreds of people that the cartels just push across. And these are people just turning themselves in. They know they'll be let loose into the interior. But there's other people trying to get away. And you have to wonder, if it's so easy to get in and stay in, why are you trying to get away? It's usually because they have a criminal record or they're part of a cartel or they're part of a gang or they're on the terrorist watch list and they know it. And so th this is a huge national security threat. And we don't even talk about these cartels like they're terrorist organizations, which, which indeed we should. I mean, there's almost 80,000 Americans dead every year from fentanyl alone. And that is directly related to, to basically two cartels, the Sinaloa and Jalisco cartels. And nobody knows who the leaders of these cartels are. It's not plastered across our newsrooms, and it really needs to be. People should know who El Mayo is. People should know who El Mencho is. These are the leaders of these cartels that are murdering Americans, poisoning them, lacing fentanyl with street drugs. And, 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 and just they're enemies of the state, and we have to look at it that way. You gave a speech the other day, and you said, uh, we don't control the border. The Mexican government doesn't control the border. The cartels do. And you're right about that. And this is where they make their money, in part on behalf of uh, smuggling human beings. The fentanyl seized the border in the past year, 14,000 pounds. I, you know, it's, um, it defies understanding as to why we would allow it. And I just, you know, I'm, you've been down there. You know this. You live in Texas. What justifies the policies they've had for the past two years? Well, from our perspective, nothing, of course. It's, it's dereliction of duty. It's uh, dereliction of their constitutional duty their to thinking? enforce the what, laws what, passed by Congress. What's their logic? How do Democrats think about this? Look, I, I think there's a few things. I think some cynically believe that the more people they let in, the better their electoral chances are in, in, the, in the far future. Now, you're, you're seeing the, the wave of Hispanics changing Republicans, so that's probably not true. South Texas is turning very red because of this. 
But I, I also think they don't respect uh, sovereignty or borders just as a general rule. They have this sort of like outsized pathological sense of compassion where, where they just, they, 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 they see poor people who, who want a better life and they're like, well, we should just let them all in. Now, those of us who are more rational say, well, there has to be some sort of line. I mean, what are they just, they're supposed to just cut in front of the many, many, many other people who also want a better uh, life in America, but are doing it the right way. That's immoral. That's unethical. And it's an infringement on our sovereignty. We don't, really, we don't even have a border. We don't even have a country of just if there's no standards or process whatsoever. And so, as usual, Democrats' feelings get in the way of their rational thinking. And, and that's, that's usually what happens here, and you're seeing it in in uh, play out right now. All right. Thank you so much, Dan Crenshaw. It's good to see you. Thanks for going down to the border and coming back here to tell us all about it. Thank you, sir. It. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.